<laughs> now, he is a comic book artist, but he works in a very unique medium, which I dig very much. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Working with the wood and all that? Um, no. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> mm, it's hard. And, oh, there's children here. Um, anyway, innuendo. <laughs> um, I'm mostly known for working in uh, mixed mediums, uh, wood being the predominant one. So anything from wood burning to, to graphite to you know acrylics uh, on uh, birch ply. My first uh, comic book series that I worked on was uh, called uh, Bartholomew the Scissors, and because I didn't know what I was doing, I, I bought you know stacks of pine lump from Home Depot that was uh, fantastically warped and full of knots and, and glorious you know tree sap and, and everything. So it smelled awesome when I was working on it, wood burning into it and stuff, and, and you know, setting my uh, girlfriend's leather couch on fire. She appreciated that, but uh, you know, we all have to sacrifice. <laughs> so it sounds like a very interesting process already. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more? Like, how do you even scan something like that? Like, how do you go from drawing on the wood uh -huh. and turning it into an actual comic book? Um, with uh, something that size, I've got a scanner that, that I read it just fine. So it's, it's 11 by 17. Um, you know, for the, the first series I did, I, 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 I didn't have a big scanner. I was just starting out figuring out uh, the comic book uh, medium. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was uh, cutting all my woods down to the printable page size and not going any larger than that. Um, just, to, just to be on the safe side. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, the scanning part, that's my big deal. And uh, I do this because I have very limited working knowledge of Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest. Yeah, so all I can really do is uh, scan it, bring it into Photoshop, pop the contrast, pop the color, and then on to the, the publisher. And nowadays, the publisher is pretty much me. No, that's, that's great. So you work with two companies, uh, Thoth. Engine Productions and then Mothermind, or? Um, yeah, they're, they're both me. They're both you, okay. Like, like you run them completely? Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> These Can days it might as well be a ch uh, tax shelter. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about them besides the tax shelter? Uh, <laughs> well, Thoth Engine is, is kind of a, an old association. It's basically just my, my studio, where, okay. where I make the glorious messes you know, wearable or otherwise. Um, and then uh, Mother Mind is, uh, was something a little newer, it was more of a collaboration between a number of different uh, artists and, uh, and uh, especially filmmakers. But uh, comic books were an easy format for them to, to get behind because it's another storytelling medium. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a lot of the partners have since gone away to bigger and better things, I hope. And uh, you know, it's kind of me and uh, my partner uh, Norman Dillon that, that do Mother Mind, and mostly from that we're we're doing film. So you know, in the future, um, I don't know if we're going to be putting out any more Mother Mind comic books, but I'll definitely still be self uh, self publishing in, in some format or another, unless um, somebody miraculously comes along and wants to actually pick pick it up. So if you say you work with films, uh, what does that entail exactly? What do you do with films? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, with the, the film stuff, um, the, the project that uh, we're filming, uh, finishing up, still under the, the Mother Mind uh, moniker, is uh, a project, a mockumentary called uh, Isolation Man. And it's based off of uh, one of my comic book, uh, comic book characters, uh, the Vanished Tear. And he's a really short-minded, arrogant, uh, just, you know, pleasant SOB, son of a bitch, you know. I guess I didn't really need to say that. <laughs> Everybody knows what SOB is. Uh, sorry. Um, anyway, he's just a, a righteous jerk-off. And, um, <laughs> he just the right time. Yeah. He's and, uh, yeah, he has, uh, he has the ability to make things uh, vanish, okay. but to never reappear. So I did a comic book that sets that whole uh, scenario up. The film, and it's a great excuse not to have a cast, 
the film is he act, he has a bad day, accidentally makes the whole human population of the Western Hemisphere vanish, never to reappear. And uh, from that, you know, he he becomes very sad, lonely, isolated. And it's the title. Um, the re remaining UN superpowers on the Eastern Hemisphere, and they're like, what, what happened to our Western Hemisphere counterpart? Um, so they send in a uh, you know, crew of documentary filmmakers. Really, is my, you know, a lot of my good friends that can do really bad accents, you know, <laughs> coming in and, you know, and, uh, and hunting down what caused this great catastrophe, and they come across this sad sack of a human being, which is, you know, the human remnant of, uh, that is uh, the vanished chair, and they document it. And that's, that's the whole mockumentary. And it's, it's ridiculous, and it's, it's fun, and really the film is just a, uh, a, a, a great excuse to, to get a, uh, a good group of uh, friends together that have a fantastic sense of humor and, and knock out something that's very uh, low impact and uh, but you know fun and ridiculous and, and hopefully uh, something worth watching. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually sounds very interesting. Um, is that out now, or? No, it's, uh, it's in post-production. Okay. It's, it's okay. being edited. We're working on uh, that, and a little bit of animation, and, and then uh, on to sound mixing. Because I gotta see that movie. So do I. You gotta see it. Um, <laughs> so do you. <laughs> back to comics. Um, yeah. You work on one called Show Devils, and it's based on uh, The Enigma and Serena Rose. Serena Rose, yeah. yeah. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about that? You guys actually just got funding for your second issue or the Kickstarter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so tell us about that. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so uh, oh, this is a bit of a long story. You want to show the audience? Like, oh, yeah, yes. Yes. Here. You just hold. Mm. Vanna wine, everybody. Mm. Give them leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> uh, denim, <laughs> new flesh. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, with uh, Show Devils, uh, yeah, that was that was pretty weird. Uh, I met them in uh, 2010 in Kentucky, of all places, Louisville, Kentucky. Who goes there? Louisville. Okay, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we were at a dark arts festival, and I was uh, a featured comic book uh, artist, and they were the, the head performers. So, um, yeah, we got to uh, talking late night over pancakes at IHOP. Um, and those guys, those are the best waiters in the world down there, as I think they're all on crack. <laughs> they're so attentive, amazing, immaculate details. It's like maple syrup everywhere you want it to be. Um, anyway. Getting off track, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know, uh, came up and they're like, oh, we should have a comic book made of ourselves. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, you're essentially Hellboy. You don't need any makeup. You look the part. <laughs> and you live and breathe. You don't need Ron Perlman to slip into your skin. <laughs> that would be nice. Right. Um, so, so that's pretty much how that started. And you know, we, we knocked out the first issue with uh, Carl Crumfaltz, who's an uncle, another amazingly talented uh, local artist. Uh, I wrote the book, and then I've uh, been just kind of continuing the, the series. Every now and then, I get a call from Enigma. <gasps> When's the next book coming out? <gasps> When's the next book coming out? It's like, oh, geez, I need a restraining order. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's all over the phone, so I really don't. Um, but. Uh, so right now, we're working on our, our third one. Uh, the second issue, we had. Uh, like Julian Yates, who's just around the corner, amazingly talented uh, guy. Uh, Stan Yan also contributed uh, art. Um, I did too, which is really weird. Uh, oddly enough, I did it on wood. Uh, go figure. <laughs> um, and we're currently uh, working on the, the third issue right now. Um, as in regards to Kickstarter, um, had some successes on uh, Kickstarter, so figured that would be a good avenue. To, um, to raise funds, because I didn't have the funds uh, right away to um, you know, pay for all the, the production and the, print, uh, the printing. So that helped. Um, you know, that's, that's a huge conversation right there uh, for those of you who um, are looking to crowdsource or crowdfund your, uh, your projects and, and endeavors. Um, 
but um, you know, I've, I've been a part of uh, several campaigns, and you know, they're all just so drastically different. Like they're they're all like different projects and different mediums too, and they attract different attentions and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> So just a couple more questions. Okay. Um, first of all, what's your favorite color? Ah, just kidding. Um, can you tell me more black, about Black, like my soul. <laughs> oh, I'm just the right guy for you. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's what are 12. you doing afterwards? Don't tell my girlfriend. He's 12. <laughs> he's, 12. <laughs> he's, uh, he's way under age, huh? <laughs> all right, never mind. <laughs> um, In that yeah, case. Do you, do you know about <laughs> this, this beauty over here? Cool. Yeah. What's that? This beauty over here. Uh, this one, right? Yes. yes. Okay, don't fall over. Um, so with this book, uh, Distortions Unlimited, it's a collected uh, limited series that I did uh, with Peter Palmiotti. Okay. He's the anchor, um, you know, Jimmy Palmiotti's little brother. Um, and uh, it's based off of uh, Distortions Unlimited, the animatronic company out of Greeley, Colorado. Uh, they have the TV show Making Monsters on Travel Channel. Uh, I was featured on the first season with uh, the comic book, and we had an Enigma on okay. to, to do a mask of his likeness, so that was pretty fun. But uh, but I wrote and illustrated the, the, the series, so it's only three issues. Um, you know, as usual, did it on, on wood, but I had Peter ink it, so that was way out of his comfort zone. And, you know, he'd phone call me and, and uh, tell me how much he hated me. <laughs> and you know, he wasn't used to it. It bleed everywhere. I'm like, I love it. It's make it work. You know, we'll figure it out. Order. Sorry, I didn't I need a restraining order. order. Yeah, yeah. I need a restraining <laughs> order against their from you know anyone but myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, stained. Uh, you know the the colorations and stuff. And then uh, we we um, I, I bought back the rights from the original publisher. And uh, we, we never released the third issue under them. So in the collected format, I was able to do that. Awesome. So that's what this is. And um, had uh, Denver book binding, you know, did the hardbound uh, you know, version of this. And, uh, you know, had uh, teleprinting, which is located downtown Denver, printed up. And then for the cover, I sculpted and, uh, you know, molded and cast it and painted and made it myself. So th we're just doing a limited run of uh, you know 50, and so they're they're going pretty fast. So I'll have a fresh stack uh, for Mile High Horror Film Fest awesome. next month, awesome. which Enigma is a guest of, and he'll be hanging out with me. So we'll be driving each other nuts. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Yeah. So um, I'm asking everybody this: um, wise words of wisdom, you know, if you, if you have any, any words that you could share with the fans or the people here, like. Yeah, parting words. Um, thanks for having me, guys, and uh, you know, uh, keep up the, the creative endeavors. Uh, the gallery looks fantastic, uh, yeah, and, and a lot of these guys are, are all my friends, uh, except for Joe Oliver. For all of them. He's <laughs> not my friend. <laughs> Let's get that down on record. He's not a friend. He's not a friend. <laughs> Oliver. He just came uh, right in. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, just walks in. What the running. fuck, man? Let's talk about some back alley fight action. I don't know. No, I'm oh, He's a good friend of mine. So that's that's why I you know, poke and prod him. Awesome. Thank you very much, Daniel Crozier. Please give it.